Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Only Choose, or If I Could Choose Only, one recording by Composer X. It would have to be Work Y. Well, Composer X, in this case, is Richard Strauss. And Work Y is, some of you have mentioned it already, and I can only go with the flow, the four last songs. Of course it is. It's the end. It's his culminating piece. Although I'm not sure how culminating he intended it to be, but that's not the point. Strauss was, first and foremost, an opera composer, um, a vocal music composer. He was also, first and foremost, a composer for the soprano voice. And the four last songs, quite frankly, simply encapsulate all that is best about him. The unbelievable lyricism, the translucent orchestration, the gorgeous singing melodies, the rich textures, it's all there. And it's all there in four handy dandy little pieces lasting about 25 minutes. Now, I understand this choice can be controversial because there's a lot of great Strauss. Remember, he basically had three careers, well, four careers, kind of, you know, Career one was his early stuff that nobody, mo you know, nobody much cares about, a couple of symphonies and lots of chamber music. And there's a lot of it, and some of it is quite good. It just isn't personal. It's just not interesting in the way the other stuff is. Then there was the radical orchestral tone poem composer. And, you know, there's a temptation to choose one of those. You know, also Sprach Zarathustra, Death and Transfiguration, Till Eulenspiegel, Ein Heldenleben, you know, all of those goodies, Don Quixote, even the Alpine Symphony. There's all those pieces, but that phase ended in the first decade of the 20th century when he started going gangbusters with operas like Salome and Electra and Der Rosenkavalier. Of course, his, his greatest opera really is probably Die Frau in a Schatten. Um, I, I love Die Frau in a Schatten. That was really my first pick for this, for this list. Um, I really thought that Cancrazans, the evil god who's going to destroy all of classical music, but for one work by each composer, I really thought that he would appreciate Die Frau in a Schatten because there's, a, there's, a, there's like a demon entity called Kaikobod, which sounds a little bit like Cancrazans. I mean, maybe there were cousins or something like that. Kaikrazans or Cancrabod, can, or I don't know. Anyway, um, they probably would have gotten along quite well. And the plot is completely silly. And like all Strauss operas, it ends about 20 minutes before you know, the singing stops. And then everyone just gets out there and starts singing about unborn children and uh, who knows what. So, so it's just glorious, absolutely glorious. But then again, you listen to the four last songs and you realize that that all the good in the man is really in these pieces. They're, they're just so exquisitely beautiful. And there's a certain sadness to them. I mean, most of them are about autumn or September or death or, you know, you know, that sort of thing. He quotes death and transfiguration at the very end. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, supposedly when Strauss was on his deathbed, he said, you know, dying is just as I composed it in Death and Transfiguration. I mean, he was nothing if not an egomaniac and nothing if not fully aware of his abilities as a composer. And so, and so I, there's something so poetically appropriate about choosing these. It's a shame that, that we can't do something bigger and longer and more grandiose because he was, of course, a master of what he even called the alfresco style of orchestration, you know, just taking this huge orchestra and throwing everything at it that he possibly could. And, and he was a virtuoso in that department. And the four last songs are actually scored with, with chamber music-like finesse. Most of Strauss's late music is that way. It's written with, with very, very limited forces used with extreme delicacy. But at the same time, at the same time, I, I can't think of anything better.
something more appropriate, something with no weak links, no no controversial elements of bad taste or or tackiness or any of the things that he's accused of in some of his larger stage works. And the other thing about picking one of the big operas, one of the famous operas, is that Strauss, above all, wanted to be the German Rossini. He wrote mostly comic operas, and they all bombed. I mean, it's not that they're not good. People just don't regard him because of his place in history and where he was and what happened in his life, and for a whole slew of reasons, as a comic opera composer. I mean, I would love to be able to do, for example, Intermezzo or Die Schweigsame Frau, which is wonderful. You know, some of those operas are just delicious and, and they get no play. And there really even aren't any wonderful recordings of a lot of them. So, so it, it, it's a bit of a trick. It's a bit of a trick finding the best Strauss. And I think The Four Last Songs is both an appropriate choice as well as an uncontroversial choice because everybody loves it. And so will Cancrazans. And it just may be that because it's short, because it, it, it's a concise little bit of who and what Strauss was, there may be um, an excuse for the great God to spare us so that we can hear the other stuff that Strauss did. I mean, we don't want to give up Till Oil and Spiegel, do we? We don't want to give up Salome and Electra and Rosen Cavalier. I mean, there's so much other Strauss that's worth listening to um, and Strauss that we have yet to discover. And so we beg of the almighty God, Cancrazans, to spare the coming apocalypse and let us listen to more Strauss besides the four last songs. But if for some horrible reason we have no choice, at least we'll have those. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.